beautiful day that's calling to work And we'll go out and play, sweet darling Cause I've got nothing but time on my hands I just wanna spend a little time with my man, sweet darling So how were you first introduced to the idea of eco-hydraulics? You know, um, it was probably about 10 years ago, maybe, and I can't actually remember the context of when I first heard the word eco-hydraulics, like if it was something that I read or if it was in a meeting. Um, and I, I just remember having this feeling of like, uh, you know, kind of when Cinderella put on the glass slipper, like it just really fit, you know? So at that time I'd been actively thinking about and studying flow biota interactions for years. Basically every research project I'd ever done was some sort of iteration of that theme. And so when I heard the word, it was like, oh, that's what I do. That, that's great. Um, and so, you know, as, as an engineer who studies biologically mediated processes, sometimes you sort of feel outside of the tribe a lot. So it was good to have a word that really encapsulated the things that I did the things that I thought about. What's an example of an eco-hydraulics research article that influenced your research? Okay, there's a lot. Um, so I have to start with the uh, Leroy Puff's 97 natural flow regime, new paradigm for river management. Um, so that, that definitely was influential to me. And then his later work with Dave Lytle about adaptation to flow regimes. So those two in combination, and then uh, later on, uh, Stuart Bunn and Angela Arthington's you know, about kind of those four basic principles about how altered flow regimes, biodiversity, those will definitely be on my top influential papers. And I make my students in the class read all three of them. And then um, there was a good review and came, came out around 1999 by David Hart and Chris Spinelli pervasive effects of, of uh, flow on benthic organisms uh, was, again, I think I probably read every article cited in that paper, and that was really influential to me. Um, and then anything that was produced by Heidi Knepp's group in MIT. Mm -hmm. What's an eco-hydraulics project that you're working on right now? Let's see, right now I'm working on studying two-way interactions between flow and biota in estuaries. So we are looking at the ways that flow um, influences the environment. So how hydrodynamics influence vegetation patterns. So specifically, we're looking at the ways that it affects mangrove recruitment and retention. So then on the opposite end, we're looking at the ways that biota affects hydrodynamic parameters. So for instance, how shoreline vegetation, including like emergent marsh grasses and mangroves influence incoming flows, and then uh, oyster reefs. So flow interacts within oyster reefs that are either degraded or nice healthy reference condition, but all of this work is being done in the context of restoration. So we're studying sites that have been restored and asking are they functioning hydrodynamically similarly to reference condition sites. Looking to the future, what is one eco-hydraulics topic that you think future generations will be better positioned to answer than we can do right now? Oh man, there's so many because uh, just our, our capabilities, uh, new technology and new ways of analyzing data are just you know, so exponentially um, expand day by day. It's so exciting to be right here right now. Um, but I think I can come up with two that I think are gonna be most influential. Um, so one, I think we're gonna be better, um, future generations are gonna be better than we are at describing hydrodynamic conditions or sediment transport within more complex geometries. Maybe we're able to, based on fundamental theory, um, come up with some models about how flow is going to react with surfaces in very simple 
uh, geometries like flow over a flat inclined plane or around a cylinder. Um, but then when we try to apply that to the natural environment, it's a little bit too heterogeneous and things start to break down. So I think that's going to be one of the big leaps that future generations are going to make. But then another, I would say, is upscaling. So being able to take observations, you know, at a very fine spatial or temporal scale and then translate that into behavior or more at a landscape scale. Is there anything else you'd wish to add for the community? Yeah. Um, so I would like to talk a little bit about workforce development. Um, and as somebody who has basic training in engineering, I think it would be really nice if we could, as a community, develop some sort of tools at the undergraduate level that would produce eco-hydraulic scholars. So, so that you don't have to have a, an advanced degree to study eco-hydraulics. So what are the educational models that we could put in at the undergraduate level that would produce scholars who are able to kind of bridge between physical science and hydrology, biology, ecology. Um, I think that would be really helpful for our field. Great. Well, thank you very much for doing the interview. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me.